All right, so this video is coming out a little earlier than I was planning, but I thought, you know what, I just want to get this video out because, I mean, it's going to be a difficult one to, to produce, but hopefully it's a good one and we'll come out with some good results. So I was thinking, you know, everybody, everybody has a camera and everybody just, you know, they shoot whatever they want. And you know, it's, it's cool to do that. I don't think you can learn a lot from that, but I think there's a, there's always, it's always a nice thing to try and come up with new skills. So I'm gonna do that today. What I'm gonna do is, put the camera down. I was thinking, it's too easy just to look through your viewfinder. And you know what, there's something we're gonna do about that. So I've got a bit of a, a bit of a scarf. And what I'm gonna do is, the challenge for today is, I'm gonna see how good I am at blindfolded photography. That's right, you heard me right. I'm gonna take the camera, come around this park. Um, I, th I feel like we've got a good, good couple of places to go. Blindfold myself the whole way, and I'm even going to edit all the photos with a blindfold on. You may be thinking this is impossible, but we'll see it. We'll see how it goes. I'm very confident with it. Let's go. Right, I have it. We are ready to go in three, two, one. I'm starting now. So for the settings, I'm gonna go for my natural instinct and I'm feeling around for the buttons and I feel like I've got the right, everything is right, I feel like. I'm ready? Okay, I'm feeling, right, I'm feeling some bushes. We can get, this is just our starting shot. See, I feel like I know where I am just from the initial feel of this park because I feel like I get a lot of comments saying things like why I'm always in this park. This is the exact reason. Now I know exactly all my surroundings. Watch, I bet, right? I bet I can find a bench somewhere. There we go, bench. And just to prove it to you how much I'm willing to bank on my my non-visible skills. Oh, I see that. that now I have, I have the, the, the fire to know what I'm gonna do. This will be a good video. I know what I'm doing. Let's go do some photography. See that? I can even jump over some water. That's how confident I am in what I'm doing. You know what? I think uh, I think we're uh, you know we're good for today. And you know what? We'll, I'll make it home, and I'll see exactly how good these pictures are. I'm gonna edit them. Let's go. All right. So 
we're at the desk now and what we're going to start doing is doing the editing of these pictures now i do feel pretty confident with what we shot now it's just about getting them in there and just i guess improving on what is already pretty good so let's go nice we're good to go all right so here's the first picture and i believe that it's just a picture of like some bushes and i think some flowers might be in the background so let's start with the edit so now i think we're going to select the curves map which hopefully will give us some nice shadows and just increase the highlights and hopefully if there are flowers in the background they will look nice and bright So now if I go back and click on the gradient map, which I think is around here, we might actually be able to add a gradient. Now the issue with this is there is a pop-up window with all the gradient selections on it. So hopefully if I, if I know what I'm doing, hopefully I can pick one right over here somewhere. And hopefully right now it should be, it should have applied. Now if I go to the other end of Photoshop and I just change up some of the layer settings. Hopefully this is one really quick and easy one done. Now the layer style drop down window is pretty small so I've got to be really accurate with where I'm clicking because I don't want to mess up anything. I don't want to turn off a layer. I don't want to change anything without me not wanting it to happen. So hopefully I've clicked on the right thing and I think if I go down just a little bit I might be able to select the soft light. All right, now is the first one done, I think, and I'm pretty sure I will be happy with it again, I think. But anyway, let's get on to the second one. All right, so this one was a pretty awkward angle because it was so low, but I think I got a decent picture. So I'm just gonna go over here and go to the levels and then just try and make the whites a bit more brighter because obviously that's the bottom of the shoe and just make the darks a little darker just to add some contrast. Right, so the image should be a bit brighter now and have a bit more of a contrast between the light and the dark. Let's keep going. Now again, hopefully I've added another gradient layer. I'm just going to try and move my hand in the exact same way I did the last time. And hopefully again, I've done something right and correct. And if I remember correctly, the orange and blue gradient layer that I usually use should be around this area. So if I just click here, and I think the orange and blue one should be applied. And again, I'm just going to try and go and find the layer style settings and just change that again. Again, maybe to a soft light if you can, if you can guess where that is again. And I feel like I should be happy with this one if it is like I'm thinking it should be in my head. So next should be a picture of a bridge, which I'm pretty sure I got, but I'm pretty sure there was a couple crossing the bridge as well. So if this is done right, this could be a really cool engagement picture. Now, if you think about it, I did this blindfolded. So can you imagine if I pulled this off? That'd be amazing. So let's actually get in and start with the engagement photography. Now, hopefully as an engagement picture already, it looks okay, but let's go in and change it a little bit more. So I'm pretty confident that I might be able to click on the gradient again. I don't know why. I just think I'm pretty sure I know where it is because I know it's in the bottom corner. That's where it always is. And select again the orange and dark blue gradient. Because again, I feel like that works pretty well and pretty nice in most edits. And you know, the same old thing. I'm gonna try and find the layer style again. And this time I'm going to try and use the lighten layer style because again, I just want it to be nice and bright because you know, it is an engagement picture. Now what would be nice here would be if I could create a vignette around the edges of this picture, but I don't feel confident in making a new layer going up to go find the lens correction and then create a vignette from there. So I'm just going to instead use the dodge tool, which I think again is right on the edge of Photoshop and it's in the middle, I think. So I'll just click around here somewhere and then I'm just gonna go around the picture and really lightly just go around the edges and hopefully I can create a nice vignette 
around the couple. And if I can pull this off, this would be amazing. All right, now, even I'm surprised that I could do an engagement picture so well. But you know what? Let's not get too cocky. We still got one more picture, which I didn't even know that I took, because apparently what happened was when I fell, I apparently, obviously the, the shutter must have gone off. So what happened was I got this cool little falling picture. So I thought, why not add this to the video? So let's go in and edit the falling picture. So I'm hoping I'm in the center of the picture, because then, you know, it look look pretty good if I was. So I'm just gonna select the vibrancy and hopefully the picture will now look nice and vibrant. There'll be a bit more color in it and you know, it'd pop a bit more. Now obviously I don't wanna make it too vibrant because then it'd look, a bit, it'd look a bit funny. And also I don't want to have the contrast a little too low or a bit too high. I just want enough to create a nice shadow in the darker areas. And if I go back and just go to the gradient again, because I just feel like if I add this one gradient to everything, then all the pictures will have hopefully like a uniform look to them and they will look like they were done on purpose. Actually, you know what, saying that, I'll, you know, I'll make this one a little bit different. Instead of using the orange and blue one, what I might do is try and find the light blue and the dark blue one. Then it look a little bit colder and hopefully it kind of gives it a bit more of an action shot to it. As you already know, we're going to go and change the layer style. This time we're going to go and go back to soft light. Hopefully this will, again, just make it nice and bright still in the brighter areas, but darker in the areas where we want there to be more contrast. Well, I did just misclick somewhere. Hopefully it was nowhere and the picture looks okay. But yeah, that's the edit. All right, and that is it. That is the little challenge we did today. And I think, I mean, I'm not gonna say too much because I haven't seen them yet, but I'm pretty sure they came out pretty well. They came out pretty cool. And you know what? I mean, I haven't seen them yet, like I just said, but even I'm surprised at how good they came out. So you know what? Maybe this is something that even you guys could try, possibly, if you know, you feel like you can do something even as good, which you know what, you probably can. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and... I'll see you in the next video. 